Our next Ignite Talk is Philip Osei Bansu from Ghana. <laughs> representing the University of San Diego. Wow. 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 I love the spirit. Thank you. Bonsoir, mes amis. Bonsoir. Ham Jambo. <laughs> and good evening, everyone. I love the spirit in the room, but I think we can take it a notch higher. Can we all be upstanding and shout Africa three times? Let's shout Africa three times before we sit down. So let's go. Africa! 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Philip from Ghana, and one of the questions I've had to answer a million times is why are you this passionate about entrepreneurship? Why are you passionate about job creation for the youth? And I'll attempt to answer this question one more time to you today. Sometime last year, I stumbled upon this article on the website of Financial Times, and it's titled, Africa's Population Boom is Both Danger and Opportunity. The word danger in there got me scared. And like you, I had to read and research further. And this is what I found out. The author of the article is David Palin of the Financial Times, a beautiful article, you can check it up. He said, amongst other things, that one of the great structural changes in the coming decades will be the huge relative shift of the global population to Africa. And the reasons were simple. Today, more than one billion people live on our continent. And it's pretty the same as in Europe and the Americas. But the good thing is, both continents have stopped growing. So Europe and the Americas have stopped growing, but Africa is still growing. By contrast, we will double our population to two billion by 2050. Asia would also add some one billion to reach five billion and also stop growing. But Africa will still grow by 2000 at least 4 billion of the world's 11 billion people will be on the continent of Africa. It even gets interesting when you look at the population of the youth. At the moment, Africa has the youngest population in the world with a median age of 20, and that compares to Europe's median age of 43. There are currently 200 million Africans between the ages of 15 and 24. As a matter of fact, by 2035, more than half of all new job seekers in the world will be Africans. And that means the issue of job creation is the biggest challenge our continent faces at the moment. By these figures, what it means is that we would have to create 1.1 billion new jobs in the next 18 years. 18 years. Africa would have to create 1.1 billion new jobs for all our youth to get engaged in jobs in the next 20 years or 35 years, as it were. So really, I mean, for the country I come from, Ghana, 48% of the youth are without jobs, 48%. And that's huge. I mean, it comes with all the threats. You know them better than I do the issues of crime, the issues of terrorism, the issues of insurgency. These are real issues our continent faces if we don't fix this challenge. And of course, the president of Ghana in a recent media press said this, and I quote, I do not need to repeat that the greatest challenge we face is the creation of jobs. Young people are very anxious about not finding jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, I would want to submit to you one more time that our greatest challenge as a continent is job creation. And we had to act as youth of this continent. And I took the action because of my fundamental beliefs, a belief in a world where every youth who is able and willing to work would have a job. So what did we do? We came, we came out with a simple innovation and yet profound. The innovation was to organize a youth entrepreneurship summit. The Youth Entrepreneurship Summit is more like a conference 
of youth who are desirous of getting into entrepreneurship. So we provide them skills training, we provide them information, networking opportunities, mentorship. The dream is to train 10,000 youth in the next 10 years, directly. 10,000 youth. And we are targeting 15 to 35 years in Ghana's Western region. There are about 300,000 of them. So we want to change the mindset, move them from job seekers to job creators. Because one thing we've realized is that majority of us left school as job seekers. So moving around seeking for jobs that are non-existent. And we had to come in to change that mindset so people can then create their own jobs. And that's basically what we've done. That's the story. Last year, the Youth Entrepreneurship Summit we organized, 253 people came. As we speak, 12 of them have launched their own startups. I'm sharing this story with you because this is not just my story. It's your story. It's the African story. It's the story of what we can do if we decide to take action. If we decide to research, to analyze, to plan, to organize, to lead, and to execute differently with vision and ambition, we can change our continent. And I'm hopeful that in 50 years from now, it will be said that our generation indeed changed Africa. And it's because of your stories. The story of my friend at the incredible University of San Diego, Stephen Ndungu, a 23-year-old from Kenya's Moy University, who wants to help fix the waste management challenge in Eldoret Town. It is also because of your story. I mean, stories of Muzalema, who is producing safe delivery kit for poor women in rural areas of Zambia. These stories make me hopeful that Africa can change. And I believe if we do what we are supposed to do, if we take the decisions we are supposed to take, then I'm confident, as Senator Barack Obama told a wary America in 2004, out of a long political darkness, a brighter day shall come. Thank you very much. And God bless you.